Welcome back, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about ordering real numbers. So let's go ahead and get started with that by taking a look at a couple definitions. So a couple of reminders for us as we're putting our real numbers in order. We're talking about least to greatest. That means we're going from the smallest number to the biggest number. On a number line, this means we're gonna be going from left to right. We're talking about greatest to least. This means that we're going from the biggest number to the smallest number. And on a number line, this means going from right to left. Now let's see this in practice by taking a look at example A. So here we are at example and it says place the following numbers in order from greatest to least. So we're going to try and find the biggest number first and then we're going to work our way to the least. Now before we start we can see that we've got a tip up here that says we're going to convert each number to a decimal. So in order to put all these numbers in order we have to make sure that they're all the same thing because we've got fractions, we've got scientific notation, we've got percents, we've got decimals, we've got a lot of different things. So in order for us to put them in order and compare them to each other we need to make sure that they all look like the same thing. So the easiest thing to turn them all into is decimals. Could you turn them all into percents? Yeah. Could you turn them all into fractions? Absolutely. But it's probably going to be a little easier to compare them if they're all in decimal form. So we're going to start with eight fifths. So the easiest thing to do in order to convert that to a decimal is to divide the top by the bottom. So if we divide eight divided by five, so we divide our numerator by our denominator, we're going to get 1.6. Now we've got a Placing order from greatest to least, our next number that we have there to work with is scientific notation. We've got 2.5 times 10 to the negative first. Now hopefully we know that when we've got a negative exponent, that means that our number is going to be smaller. And it's going to tell us to move our decimal one place to the left. So our decimal should be going one place to the left. And when it does that, we're going to end up with 0.25. If we forget scientific notation, we forget that rule on how we should be moving our decimal based on the exponent that's up there, we could always take out our Desmos calculator. And if we do that, we can see that we type in our Desmos calculator, 2.5 times 10 to the negative first, and we can see that it gives us our answer on the right-hand side of 0.25. So if you forget how to convert things from scientific notation to decimals, no worries. You just put that right in your Desmos calculator and it will do it for you. Now let's move on to the next number that we have here. We've got eight to the zero power. Anything to the zero power is one. Doesn't matter if it's eight, doesn't matter if it's a thousand to the zero power, anything to the zero power is one. The next number that we have there is 18.5%. Again, we're gonna move our decimal two places to the left in order to convert our percent to a decimal. So we're gonna end up with 0.185. Again, if we're not sure how to convert that, we could just type that right into our decimal, into our decimal calculator, 18.0% of 100, and it will tell us our decimal. And the last number we have is already converted for us, negative 1.73. All right. Now that we have all of our decimals, or all of our numbers into decimal forms, it's time to put them in order from least, or from greatest to least. Before we start though, trying to figure out which one is the biggest, which one is the smallest, there's already one number that we know is absolutely the smallest. It's the only one that's negative. We only have one negative number, so we know that one's going to be the least, because our negative number is always going to be smaller than our positive number. So negative 0.173, we know that's going in our least spot. The next thing we need to do is look for our largest number. So we've got 1.6, that's more than one. 0.25, not more than one. One is one. 0.185, and we've already dealt with our negative. So we could see the largest number that we have here is 1.6. So we're gonna put that as our greatest eight fifths. Notice that I'm writing it back in original form. I didn't leave it as the decimal. The decimal is just a tool that we used in order to convert, but when we write it down, we need to make sure that we have it back in original form. Since we know that one was our next biggest number, that's gonna be eight to the zero power. Then we need to compare 0.25 and 0.185. We can see that our two is bigger than our one, so that's going to make that number the next largest number. So 2.5 times 10 to the negative first, leaving us with 18.5% is our last number there. So that brings us to the end of example A. Now let's take a look at example B. So here we are at example B and it says fill in all of the empty boxes. So all of the numbers in order from least to greatest. So this time we're going in the opposite direction if we went in example A. Last time we had to go from greatest to least. This time we need to go from least to greatest. But they've put some numbers in the order for us and then we need to fill in the other three. 
but as you can see at the bottom, we have five examples to choose from. So we're not going to be using all of the numbers down there. So the first thing that we need to do is convert the numbers that we were given to work with. So we have negative 7 eighths, so we can divide the top by the bottom there, or divide the numerator by the denominator, and we should end up with negative 0.875, because again, we want to convert all of these to decimals. The next thing that we need to do is convert 8.5%. Now again, we can move our decimal two places to the left, or if we've forgotten, we can take out our friend there, Desmos calculator, type in 8.5% of one, and you can see here that it's going to give us our answer on the right hand side so that we know it's 0 0.085, so that we don't have to remember how many decimals to move it over if we forget. So 0 0.085 is that number there. Now we need to work on converting all of our numbers, but if we can see, we're going to be putting them in order from least to greatest, and we can notice that we have one positive number already in our order, and we only have one other positive number to choose from. All of the other numbers in our orders there are going to be negative so that we know the only number that can be greater than 8.5%, since it's the only other positive number, is going to be the square root of one. We don't really need to convert that because we are able to look and notice that all of the other numbers that we have are negative. The only one that's positive is the square root of one, so that is the only one that could be greater than 0.085%. Of course, we could check it, find the square root of one is one, and notice that one is bigger than 0 0.085, but in this case, we could save ourselves some time and energy. The next thing we have there is negative two thirds. Hopefully we know that negative two thirds is negative 0.6 repeating, but if not, our Desmos calculator is there for us. Now this time we've got negative point two, negative point, the negative 2.5 times 10 to the positive third. That means we're gonna be moving our decimal three places. And since it's positive, it's going to be moving our decimal three places to the right. That doesn't make our number positive. It just means that we're going to be moving our decimal three places to the right. So if we do that going over one, two, three, we should end up with negative 2,500. The next thing that we have to is negative 9.2. Good news, negative 0.92 has already been done for us. And the last thing that we need to do is take our decimal two places to the left to give us negative 0.165. So now we need to figure out what number is going to go between negative 0.875 and between the positive 0 0.085. So there's one number that we can rule out immediately and that's gonna be our negative 2,500. With the number being negative 2,500, that's gonna be way more than negative 0.875 as far as negative is concerned, so that's not going to fit in between. So the two numbers that we really have to work with as far as numbers in between, when we take a look, we've got negative 0.9 and we've got negative 0.8. Since this is negative, the negative would be on this side of the number line, so we cannot use that one either. The next two numbers that we have there are negative 0.6 repeating, and we've got negative 0.1. Since the six is more than the one, that's gonna be closer to our 7 eighths, and our negative 16.5% is going to be closer to our 0 0.085. So now we have all of our numbers in order from least to greatest. Now let's take a look at example C. So here we are in example C, and it's kind of like example A, where it would like us to put it in order from greatest to least, and it's kind of example A because they have not given us any numbers in order to work with. However, unlike example A, we can see that these numbers are gonna be much, much larger than any of the numbers that we've dealt with so far. So the first thing we're gonna do is convert them all to decimals, but most of them are gonna end up probably having some form of whole number. For example, our first choice is 822. We don't need to convert that. It's already converted to a whole number of 822, but we can see that it's going to be a large number. Now we're looking for 850%. Again, we could type that into our decimals calculator or we know to move our decimal two places from the left. So we're gonna end up with 8.5. Our next number is 1.3 times 10 to the third power. And again, we talked about it's a positive number. It's already a positive number. The positive exponent doesn't make it positive or negative, just tells us how many times to move our decimal. In this case, it's going to move our decimal three places to the right, so one, two, Three, and we do that, we get 1,300. And the last number we have there is 1,600 divided by three, or 1,600 thirds, however you wanna do that. Type that into your Desmos calculator and you get 533.3 repeating. 
So now that we have all of our numbers, we need to put them in order from greatest to least. So when we're looking at our biggest number versus our smallest number, we can see that 1,300 is going to be way more than 822, way more than 533, and way more than 8.5. So our greatest number is going to be 1.3 times 10 to the third. Remember, we're going to write these in original form. Our next largest number is going to be 822, as it is bigger than the 533, but that number is going to come next because 600, 1600 divided by 3, or 533.3 repeating, is way more than 8.5. We're going to finish up with 8.5%, or 850%. All right, that brings us to the end of example C. It also brings us to the end of this set of notes. So if you like this video, go ahead and throw us a thumbs up. If you love this video, go ahead and throw us a sub, and we will catch you in the next one. Yeah.